If you're having any type of problem in your life, the answer lies in Qiyamul Layl. If a person, a believer is trying to repent to Allah, they're trying to turn a new leaf, then their answer lies in Qiyamul Layl. Their sanctuary is Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer. If a, if a believer is fearful about their soul, we're about to be tempted or tested or tried, the answer is in Qiyamul Layl. If you want to build for your Akhirah, so that when you show up on the Day of Judgment, you're successful, look for the provisions in Qiyamul Layl. Uh, a believer takes that spiritual time, and they take that emotional time, and they devote it to their Lord. And one of the things that the scholars often talk about is that the night is a testimony of a person's love. So whatever a person loves, you'll see that they'll usually devote their night to that. So if a person's only concern in life is to have fun and party and maximize pleasure, they'll spend their night trying to do that. If a person's concern is their afterlife and their love for Allah, then they'll spend their night in concern about their akhirah. And the Prophet ﷺ, first of all, he told us that after the five mandatory prayers, meaning after our five daily prayers, the breast the best prayer for us is the night prayer. And we know the Prophet ﷺ told us that it is the last third of the night where Allah ﷺ comes down to the lowest parts of the heaven and he asks, he says, which one of my servants is seeking my forgiveness that I may forgive them? And which one of my servants is seeking my mercy that I may be merciful, merciful for them? Which one of my servants is asking of me that I may give to them? So all I'm saying is wake up 10 minutes before Fajr. Not an hour, not two hours before Fajr, 10 minutes before Fajr. And try and, and, and pray Qiyamul Layl. And experience this amazing spiritual nature that Allah has given us. This blessing that Allah has given us. And when you get up in the night, number one, you'll see your heart transform. You'll feel your heart unlike you've ever felt it before. And I know a lot of us, and this is a problem which is very, very common. We look at Islam and all we see is a bunch of things we have to do. And, and we're missing that spiritual side of Islam. We're missing that connection with Allah and our Creator. And I tell you that if you're seeking that connection, then get up and pray Qiyamul Layl. You will see your heart transform. You'll see this tranquility and peace that Islam is supposed to be. Get up for 10 minutes and you will see that peace and tranquility descend upon you. Allah Azza wa Jal says uh, about, about the early morning and about the companions that they would sleep very little from the night. And in the time before Fajr, they would seek the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. I ask you and I ask myself, when was the last time we got up before Fajr and we said Astaghfirullah? When was the last time we did that? And I, I remember, subhanAllah, till this day, um, when I was in Medina, one of the things the students would do is that th we would carpool to go pray Fajr in the Prophet ﷺ's masjid. So I used to live off campus, and sometimes I would drive to campus, pick up some friends, and we would drive to the Prophet ﷺ's masjid. Now, while leaving the masjid, uh, while leaving the university, sometimes there were students standing outside, because they knew somebody's going to the masjid, somebody's going to the Prophet ﷺ's masjid, and they'll get a ride. And we saw somebody standing outside, so I pulled over and I said, get in, it was one of the students. And we started driving to the masjid. <clears throat> now the masjid is about a 15 minute drive from the university. And I remember till this day, the brother who got in, throughout the whole ride, he said, first he said, assalamu alaikum when he got in. And through the whole ride, he said, astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. For 15, 20 minutes, that whole ride, and this is obviously before Fajr. And before getting out, he says to us, he says, my brothers, what is wrong with, with you? He said, why is it that you don't seek the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal? He says, haven't you heard Allah Azza wa Jal say that it is in that time, in the morning time, that they seek the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal? And it is at that moment that it hit me that I don't do that. And later on, I actually found out that this brother, even before coming to the university, he was a scholar in his own country. And may Allah Azza wa Jal reward him. The lives of the companions were much harder. They went through immense tests and trials, but if you look at their lives, their lives were absolutely beautiful. And the question is how? How were their lives so beautiful? What did they have that we don't? 
And you see, it's the spiritual nature that they had, that we're just missing. We just don't have that. And so we look at these tests and these trials and these hardships in life, and we crumble and we, we're crushed. And we can't move forward because we're missing that connection with Allah. We've never prayed Qiyam al We never tried that. We never, we never had that experience. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she tells us about one of her nights with the Prophet sallallahu She says that the Prophet sallallahu was sleeping uh, next to her, and he got up in the middle of the night, and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says to the Prophet sallallahu she says, where are you going? And he says, I'm going to worship my Lord. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says, Wallahi ya Rasulullah, I would love that you sleep next to me, but I will not keep you from going to worship your Lord. And then she says, the Prophet sallallahu got up, he made wudu, and he started praying. And when going into sujood or sajda or prostration, the Prophet ﷺ, he would tap the feet of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and she would pull her feet in. Do you know why he would tap her feet and why she would have to pull them in? Because the apartment of Aisha, the quarters of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha were that small. Some scholars even say it was four feet by six feet. That was the apartment of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. But this was the, the spiritual nature uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would pray so much Qiyam, he would spend so much time in prayer at the night that his feet would swell. And this was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he was asked that why is it that you do this? Why do you put yourself through such hardship and cause yourself so much pain when your sins have been forgiven? He said, shouldn't I be a grateful servant to Allah Azza wa Jal? And this is the same teaching that the Prophet Sallallahu conveyed to the companions. The Prophet ﷺ would walk the, the streets of Medina at night and it said that he would go to the house of Abu Bakr and he would hear Abu Bakr praying Qiyam al-Layl. But Abu Bakr he would recite in a very low voice. And then he would go to the house of Umar and he would hear Umar reciting praying Qiyam al-Layl. So he would then say to Abu Bakr, he would say, Ya Abu Bakr, raise your voice. And then he would go to Umar and he would say, Ya Umar, lower your voice. The companions, what they did during their nights, they spent their nights in worship. And Uthman, we know that it is said about him that he would spend the whole night in Qiyam. And this is something that I know a lot of us, we, we find strange. We find strange that how could somebody spend the night in Qiyam al-Layl. And the reason is that Uthman found sweetness and enjoyment in the Qiyam more than any other thing in life. So while we find enjoyment or we enjoy sleeping or rest, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala at times would pray the whole night because it is in that which Uthman radiallahu ta'ala found enjoyment. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala he says about the companions, he said, I did not see a single companion except that they would take something from the night. Meaning they would pray some type of Qiyam al-Layl. Rabi'a radiallahu ta'ala an, he was one day with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he brought the Prophet sallam some water for wudu. And the Prophet sallam saw that this companion, he had, he had something on his mind. So he says to him, ask what you want. He says, Ya Rasulullah, he says, O Messenger of Allah, I ask for your companionship in paradise. And the Prophet sallam says, Awa ghayra He says, is there anything else that you want? He says, that's it, that's all I want. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, so help me help you by increasing in your sajda. Meaning if that's what you desire, you really desire from your life to be in paradise with the Prophet ﷺ, that increase in this ibadah. It is said about Ibn Umar that his worship of the night was like this. He would pray Isha in the masjid and then he would pray his sunnah. And then the, in the masjid, they would put out a bed for him and he would sleep. He would sleep for a little while, and then he would get up and pray two rakahs, make wudu, get up, pray two rakahs of prayer. And then he would get tired and he would go back to sleep. And a little while later, he would get up and start praying again. And then he would get tired and he'd go back to sleep. And it would continue like this until the last third of the night. And when the last third of the night would come, he would get up and he would start praying. And he would pray two rakahs, and then two rakahs, and then two rakahs, and then two rakahs. He would keep praying until he thought Fajr is coming, coming in. And he would say to the companions, he would say, Asbahna, has the morning come in? And they would say, La ba'd, like you still have time. And he would keep praying. One of the amazing things about Qiyam al-Layl is 
the aspect of seclusion. And in our society, everything is very public, especially now with Facebook and Twitter and, and YouTube. Everything is public now, and we almost don't have a, a private life. And that's kind of sad in a way, because we're missing out on so much good, and we're missing out on this personal time. And Qiyam al gives that back to us. When everyone else is sleeping, passed out, snoring, the lights are off and everything, we get up and we pray to Allah when nobody else is watching. And I tell you, there is almost nothing else that will give you that charge of Iman back. And when you get up, you'll realize, there's no one watching me right now. But I'm doing it. Why? To get closer to Allah. That is the only reason. That is the only reason somebody will get up for Qiyam al That's it. Allah just says that those who they abandon their beds, they forsake their, their beds, and they call out to their Lord in fear and hope. And then the next ayah says that nobody knows what has been hidden from them, from the joys, as a reward for what they did. So you know what the scholars say about these ayahs? They say this is an example of that the reward is given according to the act. So because these people, they, forsa they, they forsake their beds, they got up and they abandoned their beds, in a time when nobody is looking, they're hidden from everyone. What is their reward? What did the next ayah say? They're given a reward which nobody has seen. And this reward is special for them. Nobody can imagine this reward. And the Prophet said that the, that the example of, of the night prayer to the day prayer is like the example of a person giving charity in public and a person hiding their charity.